All right, we've been talking about cell division, and cell division has um, basically a lot of roles, uh, such as growth, development, and replacement in eukaryotes. But across the Earth, the real reason why cells divide is so that you can make more copies of the cells. So basically, what you're trying to achieve is reproduction. Even when you are replacing old cells or even growing, what you are doing is reproducing cells at the same time to, into different types. And while that can happen within the context of a multicellular organism, and we, we don't think of that as reproduction, at the cellular level that is what's happening. Now, organism reproduction is a different story, and there are different kinds of reproduction in, in, the, in the Earth, and we're going to be talking about these kinds, but in general, this first video, we just wanted to compare sexual versus asexual reproduction. So, asexual reproduction is any time that organisms will create new copies of themselves um, without necessarily um, having any recombination and they do it all by themselves. So, when basically when organisms split up and you see an example in the screen of binary fission, a prokaryotic binary fission and also fragmentation by planaria both of which are examples of asexual reproduction. Some simple eukaryotes also do asexual reproduction by simple mitosis followed by cytokinesis. All of these, and we're going to be talking about other examples of this in other videos, but basically asexual reproduction only requires one parent. So the most basic way of thinking about asexual reproduction is that you have one parent which makes two identical copies of itself or clones. Right, so when you have a bacterial uh, culture and this, you, from one tiny bacteria you grow an entire culture of, of cells, every cell in that culture is a te theoretically, unless a mutation happened, identical to the original parent cell. And this can happen pretty fast. In fact, uh, it goes exponentially. You know, first you have one, then two, then those two become four, and then those four become, um, uh, each of them split. So. Each of the four becomes eight, and then, and then 16, 32, 64, and so forth. So within a few days, or in fact a few hours, you can have millions of cells growing from just one cell, depending on how fast the actual cell cycle is going through. All right, so that is would be asexual reproduction. Now, in sexual reproduction, it's kind of like the opposite. It's sexual reproduction, so in asexual you have that, and what in it's sexual reproduction is when different parents or progenitors which will combine half of their materials each or pieces of their materials each to form a new version that is not A or B. So there's not necessarily a copy of itself. So in asexual reproduction, it will be clones, right? So exactly like the original. But in, in sexual reproduction, they will not be A or B, but half of A plus half of B, right? Which will make a new entity altogether. Uh, C. So, by sexual reproduction, will create more variation than asexual reproduction will create, because basically you are changing the look by exchanging genes. So, the key is that asexual reproduction is a copy process, while sexual reproduction is a recombination process or a, any process that involves something like me meiosis, fertilization, conjugation exchanges of, of, of DNA and things like that. So, while, let's look at the basics then, just to verify before you go, go away from here. Number of progenitors, asexual 1, sexual 2. Number of offspring, asexual 2, sexual 1. Now remember, of course, uh, you can have that happen many times, so you can make several children through sexual reproduction, but each event will typically generate one zygote or one copy of the of a new entity all right now also one is a copy one is recombination by uh, transference um, merging and hybridization of DNA right or and also usually involves a reduction processes such as meiosis prior to that event otherwise you wouldn't have half plus half you would have one plus one equals two, and then each step of the way we have twice the DNA, and with, if that keeps happening, the, eventually the cell will, we will not be able to hold all the DNA in there. And that happens sometimes, rarely, and that we talked about that in a separate video called polyploidy. Uh, and it's the video about non-disjunction, but uh, 
in majority of life forms, that's actually not going to happen. All right. Every time you're going to do sexual reproduction, you're basically doing haploid cells combining to make diploid cells again. So what about complexity? Clearly, sexual reproduction will be much more complex. In sexual reproduction, uh, you're going to have to look for a mate. So you're going to have to uh, find a mate. You also are going to have to, to um, make sure that you produce the gametes. So you're going to have to produce this, these gametes, which is, involves two divisions. Remember, reduction division of meiosis typically involves two divisions. So that requires more energy and more investment. It also is longer because of that. So you're going to have the length is going to be different. Also, in sexual reproduction, you're going to have to meet, these gametes are going to have to meet somehow, so you're going to have to talk, communicate with the, with the mate, and in order to negotiate this connection between the, the or the sex, actually, the actual sexual act. So, it's very much more complex than, than asexual reproduction is going to be, and that also translates to more energy investment. Uh, it's more tasking for the sexual reproduction to take place than asexual reproduction to take place. All right. Now, what about sources of variation? How can animals change through either of these processes? Well, in asexual reproduction, they don't. If asexual reproduction is done right, the animals don't change at all. In fact, they are clones. So the only way variation is going to be introduced in an asexual environment is through mutations. Now, remember that with asexual reproduction, it's so simpler that it's also faster and so you can do this thousands of times in a day and therefore thousands of, of, of replications mean thousands of opportunities for mutations to take place so yes it is possible to have a lot of mutations and have an actual fast evolutionary rate or change rate because of asexual reproduction so don't don't think that just because uh, they they can't create fast variation the way the sexual production can do that evolution will also necessarily be slower. In fact, if, if anything, it's the opposite. Uh, evolution is faster on, on, on the uh, asexual reproductive organisms because they are reproducing a lot faster. So that means they go through generations a lot faster. And since evolution tends to tend take a lot of generations to take place, it would t typically be faster. While sexual reproduction typically requires the animal to reach maturity. It requires the animal to find a mate to invest in production of gametes and all of these steps which actually end up slowing down not just the achievement of the sexual act itself but also the completion of the uh, of the process as well so typically generations will will take will last longer uh, in between generations in sexual reproduction which actually slows down the evolutionary rate even if the variation rate is faster and we're going to talk about some other factors that play with that as well now in sexual reproduction, you have two sources of variation. You can still have mutations happening during the mitosis uh, and meiosis stages, which are usually part of the sexual reproductive cycle. And so anytime a cell division happens in sexual reproduction, you can have the same outcome as asexual reproduction. But since this, these divisions are slower, mutations will happen slower than they do in, a, in, in the asexual reproduction uh, process. Now, that's okay because you have a second source of variation, which is the actual weak combination. Uh, for example, in meiosis, you have the crossing over, in, and you also have the random assortment and independent assortment of homologs during the separation in, in meiosis 1. You also have random fertilization where gametes meet completely different gametes from completely different organisms, each of which are doing separation of homologs and crossing over. So when you put it all together, there's a lot of variation coming from the sexual reproduction uh, process. And what this means is that variation happens faster through sexual reproduction. That does not mean, however, the evolution happens faster. Because remember, the generations are going slower because of the investment that it takes to this, for this to happen. Now, again, remember now, let's take a look at this from an evolutionary strategy point of view. Uh, in term, if you're looking for speed or you're looking for a species that needs to replicate fast and to, in order to survive this environment, Obviously, the asexual reproductive species might be the one that's going to have the advantage. But if you're looking for an environment that has, have, has limited resources, where it's more advantageous to have biodiversity and have thousands of different types of the species out there so that one or two of them are bound to survive in different conditions as the conditions change, 
that means that sexual production will be better, which means typically sexual reproduction will respond to the rapid environmental changes better than asexual reproduction will because it will create variation faster, right? Also, because there's so much variation, there's more niche, niches produced by sexual reproduction than by asexual reproduction. And since there are more niches, there's a higher likelihood for survival because animals can are different and therefore, therefore can find different places with the environment to, to survive and a higher likelihood that at least one or two viable animals will be produced in every generation, leading to a higher chance, perhaps, of survival. But remember, if you need fast reproduction, asexual production will be better. So it all depends on the certain environment and the actual pressure that's being placed in the life form in, in, in the case. Now, if we talk about the energy point of view, clearly asexual production will be more efficient because it requires less energy and less investment. All right? But if you're talking about mutations, all right, um, asexual reproduction does not have a procedure to silence mutations, okay? Whenever a mutation happens, that becomes a new part of the population. So, and then that will keep exploding through asexual reproduction and 2, 4, 6, 8, 12, 16, 32, four, so forth, it will eventually make thousands of mutants. And, but in sexual reproduction, because you have recombination of genes, uh, random mating, um, uh, random assortment, and random gamete encounters, mutations do not necessarily become part of the population, and, or at least not as fast. And so that slows down the evolutionary process because... Uh, the actual act of sex silences mutations. Not only that, if if you have all these mutations combining, what's going to happen? It's like a broken car, right? One problem is not so much, but when you start combining and doing recombinations, if accidentally one cell ends up with too many mutations, it dies. So that means that mutations have a tendency to gather through sexual reproduction, all in one or two cells or one in two organisms of the population, which look, typically leads to the death of this organism, which actually stabilizes the population instead of and is causing it to change because the mutations are being destroyed since they're all grouping through recombination in a, a specific group of organisms. There's also evidence that for advantages or disadvantages in terms of parasites. Um, there's evidence that um, when parasites or invasive DNA such as um, uh, viruses or bacteria which uh, in, go inside the cells and, and change the DNA or even other kinds of parasites uh, are involved in a microcellular level um, or a multicellular level. Whatever parasites are in the picture, there seems to be evidence that multicellular organisms that undergo sexual reproduction tend to survive better than clonal asexual reproduction organisms. So there's something going on there that gives an advantage for uh, sexual reproduction in the, in the face of parasites, perhaps because of the variation, will produce at least some which will be immune to that parasite, so leading to uh, a better sustainability of, of that. Another reason why perhaps sexual reproduction evolved, and notice that as we go through these, I'm actually discussing reasons why asexual reproduction did not devolve, you know, why we still have it around. Both have their advantages and disadvantages depending on the situation. Another one is the actual evolution speed. Now, uh, asexual reproduction technically slow speeds up evolution because you have this blowing up of these mutations without any kind of control. But in sexual reproduction, because of the pairing, recombination, mutation silencing, and all the things we talked about, evolution, and also because the, the generations are typically longer and it takes longer, it actually slows down the evolutionary process. Even though it speeds up variation, it actually slows down evolution. So it's actually interesting. Um, and that actually might be a good thing for animals because they're not changing too fast and perhaps not changing faster than the environment is changing and therefore still being viable for the environment. But if the environment does change faster, they're technically also like, more likely to survive because there's so much variation coming from sexual reproduction, which is why sexual reproduction really took hold uh, eventually of, of, of our, of our um, a lot of species have it, right? Also, sexual reproduction guarantees that by combining gametes, you're going to have bigger chances of repairing and complementation of DNA that is broken or defective. Sometimes, even if you have a defective gene coming from mom, the gene coming from, from dad will outdo the defective gene coming from mom and you won't have problems. So here's another example why sexual reproduction protects us and there's a reason why it evolved. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about 
different examples of sexual and asexual reproduction and also about how this sexual reproduction process technically evolved from the original, which is definitely was asexual reproduction.